In this video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 principles of servant leadership. Listening, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, commitment to the growth of people and building community. So without further ado, let's do. My name is Jonathan Sandling. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning to my channel, welcome back. Servant leadership was first proposed by Robert Greenleaf in 1970 in his book entitled The Servant as Leader. And what better way to define servant leadership than to use Greenleaf's very own definition. Servant leadership is a philosophy and set of practices that enrich the lives of individuals, builds better organisations and ultimately creates a more just and caring world. Servant leadership completely rethinks the hierarchical model of leadership and turns it on its head. The traditional hierarchical model of leadership sees the leader at the top of the pyramid in a position of authority and power, whereas servant leadership flips this concept upside down, placing the leader at the bottom of the pyramid in a more supporting, serving position. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, anybody can be great because everyone can serve. And Greenleaf proposed 10 principles to help people become effective servant leaders. Number one, listening. Communication is a two-way process. Most people are very good at doing the talking bit, but not very good at doing the listening bit. Effective servant leaders are able to actively listen intently and respectfully to others and act in a meaningful way on the information they receive. In my experience, listening is a hugely overlooked skill. You very rarely hear people say, I'm gonna go and work on my listening skills. It doesn't ever happen, but people need to be doing that. Listening is central to servant leadership and central to effective communication. Number two, empathy. Servant leaders are able to effectively empathise with others. And empathy in leadership can be quite a complex topic, but in the context of servant leadership, it's ultimately about getting to know your team. What are their strengths and weaknesses? What are their likes and dislikes? What motivates them? Servant leadership is all about serving and supporting. So the better you know your team, the better you can serve and support them. Number three, healing. We're not really referring to healing someone physically from an illness, we're talking about healing on a more holistic level. And this can be achieved through coaching, mentoring, and a more relationship-orientated leadership style. People will experience difficulties in work and outside of work, which create stress and anxiety and make their lives difficult to manage. Servant leaders have the ability to identify these issues and provide healing through creating positive work environments, creating value for employees, making people feel valued, and giving people the tools they need to succeed. Number four, awareness. Having a good awareness of yourself and others is a quality that is often seen in effective servant leaders. Understanding your own strengths and talents and your own weaknesses and areas for improvement is essential for your own personal growth and development as a leader. And the same goes for understanding the strengths and weaknesses and talents and areas for development of your team, both as a collective team and as individuals within your team. Awareness also extends to the wider culture, environment, atmosphere that's occurring in the workplace or in the area you're leading. Having an awareness of the environment you're functioning in, your own qualities and the qualities of your team can greatly help you to serve, support, manage and lead that team forwards. Number five, persuasion. A key feature of servant leadership is that they gain followers through persuasion and collaboration, as opposed to other styles of leadership which are more associated with power, authority and coercion. In other words, a servant leader would want people to want to follow them, not feel that they have to follow them. This ensures that everyone has a true, sincere belief in the vision and the future ambitions and objectives of what is trying to be achieved. Number six, conceptualization. As a leader, you need to have a clear understanding where you and your organization are heading in the future. Without this clarity, there will be a lack of direction and vision. Servant leaders have the ability to conceptualize the situations they find themselves in. And this is in relation to the future outlook and the current day-to-day -day activities. Number seven, foresight. Foresight is a characteristic that enables servant leaders to understand lessons learned from the past, the realities of the present day, and the likely outcome of any future decisions. Servant leaders are highly reflective of past experiences and can reflect on the outcomes of prior decisions to inform the likely outcomes of future decisions. Foresight doesn't always come naturally to every leader, and very few leaders factor in reflective time within their schedules. So it's important to allocate specific points in the week, the month, or the day where you can sit and reflect on past experiences and future potential decisions. Number eight, stewardship. Stewardship is about a leader guiding an institution or organization throughout their journey. And Robert Greenleaf believed that all leaders of all institutions had a responsibility to ensure their institution worked for the greater good of society. So servant leaders should be ethical, authentic, and focus on more than just profits. In other words, servant leaders should be demonstrating decency in leadership. Number nine, 
commitment to the growth of people. Servant leaders believe that people have an intrinsic value beyond simply the work that they do. Servant leaders lead with a deep commitment to both the personal and professional growth of any individual they're dealing with. Ensuring staff welfare and well-being is a major consideration for servant leaders. In fact, this principle can be found in a number of other principles such as awareness and healing, making the commitment to the growth of people a central pillar of servant leadership. Number 10, building community. Developing and building an effective community is fundamental to servant leadership. Servant leaders aim to create and synthesize social and task orientated communities. Establishing strong team cohesion is an important component for servant leaders and this can be achieved through enhanced trust and an ambitious vision. If you're interested in assessing and developing your own servant leadership skills, I've created a free downloadable self-assessment questionnaire. It's a 28 item questionnaire with auto-generated results and there's a link in the description should you wish to complete it. There's also a link in the description below to my website article which explores the concept of servant leadership and the 10 principles in a bit more detail. So go and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving the like button a jolly good tap and why not hit that bloody subscribe button. I've created other videos about leadership and some other stuff, so why not check these out? My name's Jonathan Sanding, ta-ta for now.